The economy of Bihar is largely service-oriented, but it also has a significant agricultural base. The state also has a small industrial sector. As of 2016, agriculture accounts for 23%, industry 17% and service 60% of the economy of the state for the period 2002 to 2007. Average growth rate of manufacturing in the state was 0.38% against the national average of 7.8%. Bihar has the lowest GDP per capita in India, but there are pockets of higher per capita income like the southern half of the state and its capital city, Patna, had per capita income greater than that of Bangalore or Hyderabad in 2008. The GSDP stands at 368,337 crores rupees $59.4 billion nominal GDP as per 2013–2014. In actual terms, as of 2012–2013, Bihar state GDP is ranked 13 out of 29 states. Corruption is an important hurdle for the government to overcome according to Transparency International India, which the government has also acknowledged. Since November 2005, a new government led by Nitish Kumar has implemented a number of economic and social reforms. A consequence has been a positive improvement in the economy of the state and also of Patna. For example, in June 2009, the World Bank reported that Patna was the second best city in India to start a business, after Delhi. Between 1999 and 2008, state GDP grew by 5.1% a year, which was below the Indian average of 7.3%. However, in January 2010, the Indian government S Central Statistics Organisation reported that in the five-year period between 2004–2005 and 2008–09, Bihar's GDP grew by 11.03%, which made Bihar the second fastest growing economy in India during that five-year period, just behind Gujarat's growth of 11.05%. Another survey conducted by Central Statistical Organization (CSO) and National Sample Survey Organization under MOSPI said that Bihar saw 14.80% growth in factory output in 2007-08, which was slightly less than the Indian rate of 15.24%. Topic: History. Topic: Mauryan The Magadha economy, under Mauryan royal government, depended mainly on agriculture and the state owned large farm lands for cultivation. The other income of the state came from the taxes levied on agriculture, land, trade, and industrial products such as handicrafts. Mauryan agriculture had two types of landholdings, one were the Rashtra type of holdings which were the direct descendants of the holdings of the former tribal oligarchies who had been subjugated in pre-Mauryan times. The Rashtra landholdings were independent of the state machinery in their internal functioning and administration. Their only obligation was the regular payment of the Rashtra taxes to the state. The second major type of landholdings were the Sita landholdings. These were formed by clearing forest lands with the help of the tribesmen whose tribal way of life had been systematically and annihilated by the Mauryan statecraft. Rice, wheat, coarse grains, sesame, pepper, saffron, pulses, linseed, mustard, vegetables and fruits of various kinds and sugarcane were grown. The state owned huge farms and these were cultivated by slaves and farm labourers. Water reservoir and dam were built during this period and they were measured and distributed. The chief industries were mining, metallurgy, jewellery, pot making, textile. The trade was regulated by the state. Artisans and the craftsmen were specially protected by the state and any offences against them were severely punished. Guilds were powerful institutions during this period and they provided economic, political and judicial powers to craftsmen. The chief of the guild was called Jesthaka. A few guilds issued their own coins. These guilds also made donations to learned Brahmins and to the destitute. The Mauryan Empire supplied Western countries with indigo and other medicinal substances, cotton, silk. Trade was carried out in both land and sea. Godowns, warehouses were built and special provisions were made to protect the trade routes. The state controlled the weights and measures. <laughs> Shursha reforms 
In the 1540s Sher Shah, the ruler of Bihar and northern India, introduced measures that included laws to ensure that peasants were not cheated and that all were treated equally irrespective of religion and class. Sher Shah built the Grand Trunk Road stretching from Bengal to Peshawar, which is in use even today. He introduced a coin named Rupiah, to which the modern Indian rupee system can be traced and also introduced the levy of custom duties. The empire stretched from Bengal in the east to Indus in the west. Sher Shah divided his empire into 47 sarkars which were further subdivided into perganas for ease of administration. The reforms were an indication of the economic sophistication of the Bihar region during Muslim government. Colonial Congress <inaudible> 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 1947–1979 The sugar and vegetable oil industries were flourishing sectors of undivided Bihar. Until the mid-50s, 25% of India's sugar output was from Bihar, 50% of horticulture products was from here, rice and wheat was around 29% and Bihar was truly an agriculture power house in the days after independence. Dalmianagar was a large agro, industrial town. There have been attempts to industrialize the northern half of the state between 1950 and 1980, an oil refinery in Barani, a motor scooter plant at Fatua, and a power plant at Muzaffarpur. There are many factors behind the economic decline of Bihar. Many in Bihar blame the freight equalization scheme, poor political vision, under-investments in the key sectors of agriculture, infrastructure and education. Others view cultural and political factors as reasons behind economic decline, especially in the 1980s and 1990s. State incapacity by design, where the ruling establishment under Lalu Prasad and the Rashtriya Janata Dal (RJD) deliberately limited government presence through reduced hiring and expenditures in an attempt to ensure that upper castes did not benefit. Such a strategy also had value when looked at through the lens of electoral politics, as it enabled the crystallization of a number of poorer and historically oppressed groups into vote banks that would see Lalu Prasad as their champion. Along with it the terrible governance that came with the Yadavs of Bihar being in power brought the economy to its knees. The government, between 1947 and 2000, supported the industrialization of the southern half of the state rather than the north was the major cause of the lack of industrialization in North Bihar. The undivided Bihar government developed important industrial cities like Bikara, Jamshedpur, Danbad, and Ranchi in the south. The north remained the agricultural heart of the undivided state. The two regions complemented each other. 1980–1989 Indian government data from 1980 to 1990 also show that the GSDP of the undivided Bihar grew by 72% in this period despite the socio-economic problems of the state. The data also shows that the state GSDP grew by 49% between 1980 and 1985, which means that the economy was one of the fastest growing in the country during the early 1980s as well. In 1980 undivided Bihar had a population of 70 million. In the 1980s, the five-year plan called for $4 billion in investment in Bihar. By 1987, the $4 billion translated into $12 investment per person. Economists claimed that a huge budget deficit is spurring inflation, eroding the standard of living of the poorest sections of the people of Bihar. In agriculture, the largest sector, the government failed to invest in the production of agriculture and instead opted to import food grains from other parts of India. This decision helped facilitate problems faced by agricultural workers in the late 1980s and paved for the victory of Lalu Prasad in 1989. Collapse 1990–2005 Caste and criminalization The Rashtriya Janata Dal leader, Lalu Prasad's, support of social justice ensured that politics was dominated by Mandal politics and caste rather than development during this period. Also, the criminalization of politics during this time created a business-unfriendly climate and contributed to the economic collapse. The biggest crisis business faced was with organized kidnapping, which the local BJP leaders claimed was linked to the ruling RJD. The resulting crisis led to a flight of capital, middle-class professionals, and business leaders to other parts of India. 
The flight of business and capital increased unemployment and this led to the mass migration of Bihari farmers and unemployed youth to more developed states of India. Non-RJD factors Bihar's share of revenue from the central pool declined by 5,000 crore rupees as the centre's revenue collection had gone down. This, coupled with the fact that the government failed to get its plan allocation released because it could not contribute the matching non-plan grant, aggravated the financial crisis. The division of Bihar in 2000, when the industrially advanced and mineral-rich southern half of the state was carved out to form the separate state of Jharkhand, had a strong impact on development in the north mainly through a loss of revenue. Divided Bihar produces 60% of the output of the undivided Bihar. Economic indicators under the RJD in the non-agricultural sector, the growth rate in Bihar was 6.62% against 6.61% for India as a whole during the 1980s. During the 1990s when the growth rate in Bihar was 3.19%, while for India it rose to 7.25%. This change was reflected in the per capita income as well. Per capita income in Bihar grew by 2.45% during the 1980s, against 3.32% per cent in India as a whole. In the 1990s, per capita income grew by 0.12% per cent in Bihar, as against 4.08% per cent in India. The growth rate in agriculture was 2.21% during the 1980s against India's 3.38%, during the 1990s it was 2.35% in Bihar while at the All India it stood at 3.14%. The economic indicators see below shows that there was a serious recession between 1990 and 1995, which resulted in an employment development crime crisis between 1995 and 2004. Current Nidish Kumar reign after Nidish Kumar came to power, the finance ministry under Sushil Kumar Modi gave priority to create investment opportunities for big industrial houses like Reliance. Improvements in law and order, with a more proactive bureaucracy led to a gradual improvement in the economy of the state. NDTV dubbed this as the ''quiet transformation''. In January 2009, Nidish Kumar was awarded the CNN Ibn Indian Politician of the Year Award for helping put Bihar on the sustainable development and growth track. Again in January 2009, the ASSOCHAM investment meter stated that the private sector invested over 304 crore rupees in Bihar during the third quarter of 2008. Topic: <laughs> Policies. After November 2005, the government of Bihar has introduced several laws, which it hopes, will provide a positive contribution to the future development of the state's industries. 2006 Bihar Single Window Clearance Act Bihar Infrastructure Development Enabling Act New industrial policy price preference policy New policy initiatives for entertainment, tea processing and sugar sectors Policy for establishing higher technical institutions in private sector Simplification of VAT regime 2007 VAT reimbursement at 80% of the deposited amount for a period of 10 years with a ceiling of 300% of the capital investment. Provisions for incentive even in zero VAT cases. Reimbursement of 50% of the amount spent on plant and machinery for captive power generation. 25% of the VAT reimbursement for the existing units. Exemption from electricity duty for new units. Exemption from stamp duty and registration fee on land transfer. Incentive granted on land, shed in industrial area, industrial park etc. Incentive granted on land, shed in industrial area, industrial park etc. Corpus fund creation for sick and closed units. Exemption from annual minimum guarantee, monthly minimum guarantee. CST reduced to only 1% for small and medium industries. Topic improvements and investments topic topic Roads construction and investment topic The government is working on the expressway from the Pravankal border through Bihar to Jharkhand, and has also expanded the highway from Hajipur to Muzaffarpur from a two-lane to a four-lane highway. The central government-funded Northeast Corridor Expressway will run through the northern part of the state making the north better connected with the rest of India. 
The state now spends 2007-2008 crore rupees on roads, compared with 51.2 crore rupees between 2003 and 2004. In September 2008, $420 million USD loan from the Asian Development Bank (ADB) was provided to the government to improve nine state highways. The loan would be used to convert nine state highways into double lane roads covering a total stretch of 820 kilometers, 510 miles. The government's aim is to convert these roads into double lane traffic corridors as per international standards and bids have been invited for the conversion of these roads in accordance with international bidding procedures. The ADB had also given its consent for development of 1500 km 930 miles stretch of state highways into two lane roads as per international standards under Bihar State Highways Project BSHP. BSHP will be executed in two phases. The nine roads have been included in its first phase. World Bank India Director Anno Rull has said that the bank would double up its assistance to Bihar from current 500 billion dollars in the next couple of years. Topic mobile phone growth Topic Bihar also has the largest growing mobile phone market in India. Bihar registered the maximum increase in annual telecom subscribers, marking a growth of 88.2% in the fiscal 2007–08 as compared to the 51.1% in 2006–07. The total number of mobile phones in Bihar increased from 57, 73,370 in 2006 07 to 108, 69,459 in 2007 08. Topic industrial development Topic For industrial development, the NDA government has cleared a total of 135 proposals worth 71,289.64 crore, rupees, submitted by big entrepreneurs for setting up medium and large industries. The proposals are related to sugar mills, ethanol, engineering and medical colleges and power production in the state. A sum of 602.54 crore rupees had already been spent on various activities pertaining to the cleared projects, which are likely to create job opportunities for over 114,000 people. The proposals include opening of 23 new sugar mills and the expansion of seven existing ones, apart from the production of ethanol in two sugar mills and five sugarcane juice production plants. The projects regarding five power plants, 12 food processing units and 15 steel processing and cement plants have also been cleared by the state. <laughs> Tax collection improvements there has been an improvement in tax collection by the state government. Tax collection growth in the first half stood at 265%. Patna witnessed a growth of 43.09% in personal income tax collections at 559 crore rupees. Impact of the MGNREGA. The implementation of the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act has also led to a dramatic fall in the number of migrant workers in India's Punjab state. State GDP from 2004 to 2007 under president's rule february to november 2005 and the current nda government november 2005 till date the state sgsdp is growing on average by 12% per annum and from 2004 to 2007 the state sgsdp had grown by 22% the growth rate has resulted in visits by Indian business leaders to Patna, making commitments to invest in the state's fast growing economy. See economic indicators below. 2008 2009 credit crisis Despite the global credit crisis, automobile sales and the real estate sector continued to grow in Bihar. Auto sales grew by 45% to 1, 33,000 in the last 11 months of 2008, against 92,147 sold in 2007. Due to the global credit crunch, many Indian states have reported a decline of 20–25% in the automobile sales. Deputy Bihar Chief Minister Sushil Kumar Modi said. The rise in sales figure of vehicles in the state at the rate of 45% shows that the recession has not affected the sector at all in the state. 
November 2008 reported 19,729 vehicle sales in different categories, whereas 15,326 vehicles were sold in the same period of the prior year. The Revenue Collection Department in Bihar has registered a growth of 28.02% in revenue collection until November 2008. The department collected 192.01 crore rupees in 2008 against 149.99 crore rupees in 2007. Also, the real estate sector earned 37 crore rupees in revenue from flat registrations in October and November 2008 alone. Altogether 3,139 flats were registered, which indicates there is good cash flow. The real estate sector has been badly hit by the global recession in other parts of India, which have compelled the builders to slash rates and offer attractive packages to push through their sales. The small industrial base, brought on by political mismanagement in the 1990s, the small-scale nature of the loans sector, and that employment is generally with public sector, or semi-government-owned businesses, are all key factors in Bihar avoiding the recession. The service sector, which is the other large employer, is not as mature as other Indian states and caters for a large market. Modi added that the rate of real estate properties had increased tremendously since it was the middle-class population who dominated the state. Another factor was that a huge number of development projects had been launched in Bihar since the NDA government came to power in 2005, which had drawn many construction companies, builders and suppliers. In 2008 alone, the state government was investing 13,500 crore rupees, 135 billion rupees on development projects. Topic: <laughs> Kosi floods. Topic: Standing crops worth 800 crore rupees were destroyed in the five northern districts of Saharsa, Supal, Madhapura, Araria and Purnia. Three lakh hectares of cropland were submerged under flood water. Up to 3,500 people have been reported as missing. <laughs> Public-private partnership Indian Railways contract Indian Railways announced contracts to manufacture electric locomotives in Bihar. The electric locomotives will be manufactured at a factory in Madhapura and the diesel ones at Marora. Five multinational companies have been shortlisted for two separate contracts, jointly worth an estimated $8 billion crore rupees, to manufacture and supply locomotives for the Indian Railways. In the past, Indian Railways manufactured locomotives at the Chittaranjan Locomotive Works in West Bengal or from state-owned Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, and diesel locomotives from Diesel Locomotive Works in Varanasi. These factories now have developed capacity issues. Germany's Siemens AG, Bombardier Transportation India Limited, a unit of Canada's Bombardier Inc., and France's Alstom SA is attempting to secure an order to build and supply at least 660 electric locomotives for the railways. General Electric Co., GE and Electro-Motive Diesel Inc. EMD will compete for the second contract, to build and supply 1,000 diesel train engines for the national transporter. Topic economy of Patna Topic Patna is the largest city and headquarters of Patna District, Patna Division, and Bihar State. It lies on the main line of the Eastern Central Railway and is well connected by road. It is estimated that the city has a population of 1.8 million people, and the district has a population of 3.6 million. Topic background Topic During the 17th century Patna was the centre of international trade. The British opened a factory in Patna in 1620 for the purchase and storage of calico and silk. Soon it became a trading point for saltpetre, and other European countries like the French, the Danes, the Dutch and the Portuguese began to compete in the lucrative business. Various European factories and godowns started mushrooming in Patna and it acquired a trading fame that attracted far off merchants, as observed by Peter Mundy in 1632, who calls this place the greatest mart of the eastern region. Topic manufacturing, export, import topic The city is known to manufacture pulses, shoes, scooters, masser, chasra, electrical goods, and cotton yarn. The city exports these manufactured products as well as vegetables, purval, and milk. Patna is a major importer of cotton, iron, food grains, rice, wheat, wool, and dalhan. Rice accounts for more than one third gross area sown. Other important food grains grown are maize, pulses, and wheat. 
Non-food crops consist mostly of oil seeds. Cash crops such as vegetables, watermelons, etc., are also grown in Diara Belt. Topic canals. Topic Patna is one of the few district of the state which have a network of irrigation canals. Attention has been paid to the provision of irrigational facilities. Besides the various irrigational projects executed in the districts, tube wells under the Patna Barh Ekingasarai Bitta Emergency River Pump and Technical Cooperation Administration schemes were installed in the districts. Topic fishing Topic The city is one of the best fishing grounds in India. The spawn of Rihu, Katla and Hilsa is collected from the river Ganges, which is demand in other part of Bihar and West Bengal. The fishing season begins in October, and the peak months are in December, January and February, when a variety of fish can be seen in the fish market. There are a large number of rivers and streams, ponds and low-lying fields in the district where water accumulates in the rainy season and these have considerable potential for development of fishery. The fisheries development schemes of the district are managed by the District Fisheries Office located in Patna under the administrative control of the Director of Fisheries, Government of Bihar. Topic per capita income a topic Even though Bihar has the lowest per capita income in the country at 5,772 rupees against the national average of 22,946 rupees, Patna recorded a per capita of 30,441 rupees. The per capita level for 2007 was higher than Bangalore or Hyderabad, which are both leading centers for global software development. Topic: <laughs> Development. After decades of neglect, the new government of Nitish Kumar worked to make improvements in the economy of Patna. The NDA government has raised financing and backing for major projects to improve the entertainment sector in the city. It is expected that in 2009 new multiplexes, malls, parks, restaurants will all open in the city. China and US are already doing brisk business in Patna. The government is investing 300 crores on two projects, one to replicate the Delhi hot in Patna, and the other to create a Buddha park. <inaudible> World Bank report In June 2009, the World Bank ranked Patna as the best city in India, out of 17, to start a business. The World Bank also ranked Patna second for the enforcement of contracts, ninth in dealing with construction permits, fifteenth for paying taxes and registering property, tenth for trading across borders, and fifteenth for closing a business. Overall, the city was placed fourteenth. Civic amenities Basic civic amenities have not improved in the city as of January 2009. Garbage is being dumped in open spaces across the city. In terms of drinking water, almost half the total 4 lakh estimated households do not have a legal water connection. Moreover, frequent leakage in the existing pipelines still continues at different city localities. The city pumps 110 million litres of untreated sewerage to River Ganges. Poor condition of sewerage system, which in some areas, runs very close to the drinking water pipeline, also affects the quality of drinking water. Sectors Agriculture Bihar has significant levels of production for the products of mango, guava, lychee, pineapple, brinjal, cauliflower, bindi, and cabbage in India. Despite the state's leading role in food production, investment in irrigation and other agriculture facilities has been inadequate in the past. Maize accounts for 1.5 million MT or 10% of country production. Sugarcane produces 13.00 million MT. Lychee production is 0.28 million MT Bihar contributes 71% of national production Makana levels are 0.003 million MT Bihar contributes 85% of national production Mango is 1.4 million MT 13% of all India Vegetable production is 8.60 million MT 9% of all India Honey production is 1300 MT 14% of all India Aromatic rice 0.015 million MT 
Milk production present, 4.06 million mount. COMPFED has established 5,023 cooperative societies with 2.54 lakh membership highest among the eastern states. Fishery production levels are 0.27 million lakh MT. All the above data is from the Bihar government can be found here. Topic: Sugar. Topic: The Indian Business Directory states that the Bihar sugar industry has flourished in the last couple of years due to the efforts taken by the state government to revive the industry. The sugar industry has been helped by the climate of the state, which is very suitable for the growth of high-grade sugarcane. The main benefit of the industry is that it provides employment to many people, especially in the rural areas. Further, it provides facilities of transport and communication, and also helps in the development of the rural areas by mobilizing the rural resources. The total number of sugar mills in Bihar sugar industry is 28 out which only 9 are operational. The total area under sugarcane production is 2.30 lakh hectares and the total production of sugarcane is around 129.95 lakh mt. The location of the sugar mills of Bihar sugar industry are Samastapur, Gopalganj, Sitamari, West Champaran, Chorma, Dulapati, and Supal. The industry can be divided into two groups, the unorganized sector, which comprises traditional sweeteners manufacturers, and the organized sector, which consists of sugar factories. The producers of traditional sweeteners are considered to be a part of the rural industry and they manufacture khanzari and gur. These are consumed mainly by the rural people and are produced in substantial quantities. The total production of sugar in Bihar sugar industry was 4.21 lakh tons in 2002-2003 and in 2003-2004, the figure stood at 2.77 lakh tons. Again, in 2004-2005, the figure was 2.77 lakh tons. The state government, in order to boost the sugar industry in Bihar has decided to privatize the state-run sugar mills that have not worked for many years. The state government has also approved the proposal for the setting up of 15 new sugar mills in the state which will bring in an investment of 3,771 crore rupees in Bihar sugar industry. Topic brewery sector Topic Bihar has emerged as brewery hub with major domestic and foreign firms setting up production units in the state. Three major firms, United Breweries Group, Danish brewery company Carlsberg Group and Cobra Beer, are in the process to setting up new units in Patna and Muzaffarpur in 2012. This sector however received a major setback with state-wide ban on alcohol sale, consumption and production in Bihar by Chief Minister Nitish Kumar in 2015. Topic leather topic The state is very rich in cattle population. There are 50,000 footwear artisans in the state. State has tanneries in the private sector. More tanneries and footwear units are to be set up in the private sector. Topic textile topic Total number of weavers in Bihar is more than 90,000. Bagalpur is known as leading silk city. Gaya another major weaving center around 8,000. There is a strong traditional handloom clusters in the districts of Bagalpur, Gaya, Nalanda, Darbanga, Madhubani, Siwan, Patna. Infrastructure leasing and financial services is preparing project report for textile parks and also for cluster development programs. However, most of textile centers in state on decline, producing low-value goods. Now Gaia is developing very fast in textile sector, approximately 10,000 looms are running and several new projects are coming soon. Shuttle less and high-tech technology is also adopting very much, and in Nalanda Rajgar is also developing in textile sector. Topic small scale industries topic The small scale industries have contributed to Bihar's economic upsurge. The total investment of SSIs is 88.75 crore rupees. Small, artisan based industries are generating 5.5 lakh mandates in the current fiscal till December. Topic key organizations topic topic Security and intelligence service topic The CIS, an unlisted security company, has the largest manpower in the Asia-Pacific region with a projected revenue of 2,000 crore. The CIS has over 10,000 foreign nationals as its staff members. The Patna registered company achieved this through the acquisition of Australian Guard and Mobile Patrol Services Business of American Conglomerate, United Technologies Corp. UTC. The deal closed in August 2008. It includes Chubb Security which is Australia's largest and oldest security company. 
Chubb Security earned $400 million last year. The CIS is reportedly funding the acquisition through a mix of debt and internal accruals. The CIS, ranked among India's top three security services firms, has 30,000 employees in India and it is expected to add up to 80,000 by 2012. Its 2,500 odd clients include Tatas, Birlas, Reliance, SBI, PNB, Assisi, Hyundai, American Express, SR, Coca Cola, Pepsi, Idea, and Wipro, to name a few. Chairman, Managing Director Ravindra Kishore Sinha said, from pedestrian Patna setting to the panoramic skyline of Sydney, it has been a long and rewarding journey, he said, adding the CIS remains rooted, registered and taxed in Bihar. Suda Co-operative Suda, a dairy cooperative, is one of the most successful government companies in India. The cooperative was founded by IAS officer from Bihar, Ram Chandra Sinha. The co-operative's revenues from a range of milk and milk products has risen from $73.5 million in 2001–2002 to $136 million in 2007. The cooperative has 6,000 outlets covering 84 towns in the state. Over 260,000 milk farmers are members of the cooperative. Suda also sells its products to other Indian states like Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Jharkhand and Delhi. Topic Husk Power Systems Topic Husk Power Systems HPS is a Bihar-based startup that provides power to thousands of rural Indians. HPS has created proprietary technology that cost-effectively converts rice husks into electricity. The organization uses this technology to produce, own, and operate 35 to 100 kilowatts mini power plants that deliver electricity as a pay-for-use service to villages of 2000 to 4000 inhabitants in the Indian rice belt. In 2009, the company won an inaugural Global Business Plan competition sponsored by venture capital firm Draper Fisher Jurvetson and Cisco Systems. The company will receive a $250,000 investment from DFJ and Cisco to help take the technology to the next level. The company has since received two rounds of financing from the Shell Foundation. Two of the key founders of HPS are graduates of the top ranked Darden School of Business. University of Virginia. IOC Barani topic IOC Barani in the Bihar state of India was built in collaboration with the Soviet Union at a cost of 49.4 crore rupees and went on stream in July, 1964. The initial capacity of 2 MMTPA was expanded to 3 MMTPA by 1969. The present capacity of this refinery is 6.00 MMTPA. A catalytic reformer unit crew was also added to the refinery in 1997 for production of unleaded motor spirit. Projects are also planned for meeting future fuel quality requirements. Union government has planned to develop a petrochemical plant along with the refinery. Topic East Central Railway, Hajipur Topic Hajipur is the only twin city of Patna and lies nearest to the capital and shares most of its government works, headquarters, educational institutions in the name of the capital city. Being another district headquarters, it is equal to the capital in terms of powers. It is one of the railway zones in Indian railway system i.e. East Central Railway Zone, it comprises the following railway divisions, Samastapur, Danapur, Mughalsarai, Danbad and Sunpur. Topic LIC, East Central Zona Topic Zonal, comprises following LIC division, Patna, Jamshedpur and Sambalpur. Topic National Thermal Power Corporation Topic Eastern Region Headquarters of Indian Power Major NTPC is situated at Patna, following are the major power plants under this region, Kahalgan, Talchur and Faraka. Upcoming power plants in the region are as follows BARH Patna, Nabhanagar Aurangabad. Topic PowerGrid Corporation Topic Eastern region comprising Bihar and Jharkhand Regional Headquarter is at Shastri Nagar, Patna. Topic economic indicators topic topic GSDP at current prices 2000-2007 topic from the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation February 2008 data rupee value in crores not including Jharkhand topic net state domestic product NSDP at factor cost at current price topic from Reserve Bank of India Handbook of Statistics on Indian Economy 2011-12 Rs crore topic income distribution north south divide topic in terms of income the 
the districts of Patna, Munger and Begasarai in Bihar were the three best-off districts out of a total of 38 districts in the state, recording the highest per capita gross district domestic product of 31,441 rupees, 10,087 rupees and 9,312 rupees, respectively in 2004–05. Topic poverty, income, and urbanization topic The state has a per capita income of $360 a year against India's average of $1,265 and 30.6% of the state's population lives below the poverty line against India's average of 22.15%. However, Bihar's GSDP grew by 18% over the period 2006 2007, which was higher than in the past 10 years. Hajipur, near Patna, remains a major industrial town in the state, linked to the capital city through the Ganges Bridge and good road infrastructure. The level of urbanization is below the national average. Urban poverty in Bihar is above the national average of 23.62%. Also using per capita water supply as a surrogate variable, Bihar 61 liters per day is below the national average 142 liters per day. References, <references>